Welcome to my final project presentation, a review on literature on hybrid course design. My name is Karen. This review explores literature on hybrid learning and identifies recommendations for instructional designers. Terminology and definitions are discussed, including the debate between the words blended, hybrid and high flex. The learning advantages of using a hybrid format are identified from the literature and recommendations are discussed. The review concludes with a call for future research into hybrid learning and how to best design hybrid courses from an instructional design point of view. According to the EduCourse Horizon Report, Teaching and Learning Edition 2021, since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, most institutions have been supporting hybrid teaching and learning options for both on-campus and online. Hybrid learning has unique instructional design elements and considerations. This review aggregates a selection of literature on hybrid learning to provide instructional designers and educators with practical tools for developing and teaching hybrid courses. It is important to establish a working definition for this review to categorize and present the recommendations of the research. Finally, potential areas of future research for hybrid courses are identified. To find relevant literature regarding hybrid learning, I conducted a broad search for articles with the keyword hybrid. Articles that made a concrete recommendation regarding hybrid learning were selected. Although the term hybrid learning is widely used these days, especially in corporate and higher education settings, the term itself is quite difficult to define since it is used in diverse ways. This review aims to explore the current perception of the concept of hybrid learning and to describe its methodology as it depicts a combination of incongruent methods. With the arrival of new information and communication technologies, the whole educational system has undergone dramatic changes within the past two decades. These technologies have altered common approaches to teaching and learning. As Bong claims, anyone can now learn anything from anyone at any time. Garrison and Kanuka define blended learning as the thoughtful integration of classroom face-to-face -face learning experiences with online learning experiences. It's also stated that the two terms, hybrid learning and blended learning, are used alternatively but refer to the same concept. The need of the learner is currently one of the critical focus areas of teaching and learning. The learner expects to be able to interact with the learning materials as well as his peers. In addition, he wants to study independently and he wants to be mobile in his learning. These characteristics require adjusted learning approaches out of which the best seems to be hybrid learning. A hybrid course, however, means different things to different researchers. Therefore, it is important to establish a working definition for this review. The key feature of hybrid learning is that it can be adjusted according to the needs of the learner, the course and the other significant indicators such as space, time and space. For this review, the literature reviewed considered a course to be hybrid if some student-student and student instruction interactions were situated in a face-to-face -face setting and some took place in an asynchronous or synchronous online environment. An important concept in the definition of hybrid learning is the interaction between the learners, teaching and learning resources. The literature on hybrid learning demonstrates how the hybrid format affects learning. Several studies found students received higher grades in hybrid classes than they did in fully face-to-face -face or online classes. Some studies reported that hybrid courses had higher retention rates than fully face-to-face -face classes. Regarding the method of communication and social presence in a hybrid course, research finds that access to an asynchronous online forum allowed students to reason and construct opinions. It also kept students engaged with the institution even when they were off campus. 
teamwork, the quality of learning and the achievement of instructional objectives are also positively impacted. With these advantages of hybrid courses in mind, it is clear that just turning a traditional online course into a hybrid course is not viable. The aim must be to identify instructional design best practices specific to developing a hybrid course. These recommendations can act as a starting point for instructional designers developing hybrid courses. The schedule and structure of hybrid courses can vary significantly from one class to another. This underscores the pedagogical flexibility characteristic of hybrid model. As literature stresses, the student engagement is influenced by contextual variations such as learning environments or instructor strategies, it is important to investigate how student engagement as an effective learning outcome is influenced both by the design of the synchronous hybrid learning environment as well as by the type of participation. There are also some specific recommendations for how to structure the communication in a hybrid course. The motivation to establish interpersonal connections and communicate is not a new concept when investigating learning processes. However, as online communication becomes increasingly embedded in hybrid courses, these learning processes become more complex. Online and offline communication should not be seen in isolation from one another. They impact and enhance one another. Starting with a face-to-face course and adding online activities typically increases workload for both instructor and student. The course and a half phenomena reflect what many students dislike about hybrid courses, that there is too much work. There should be a strong integration between components like weekly topics or course content, pointing to discussion, instructor feedback about progress or performance and practice in the face-to-face -face session. This way, students are more motivated to participate and be prepared for deadlines and required meetings and take more ownership of their learning. Several factors would reduce communication and negatively impact the experience of a hybrid course. Repeating course content in the online and face-to-face -face sessions, miscommunication and lack of interaction with the instructor were mentioned in the reviewed literature. Instructional designers should aim to design a hybrid course in such a way that face-to-face -face and online sessions enhance the course material, but do not repeat it. Learning is dynamic and complicated, and hybrid learning adds another layer of complexity. However, by being intentional, one can help students thrive in every learning environment. Hybrid learning is currently widely adopted across higher education, with some studies referring to it as the new normal in course delivery. The pursuit of knowledge is a defining factor for the current civilization. Hybrid learning represents an evolution of this pursuit since it involves delivering learning through in-person and remote instruction simultaneously. Hybrid learning is here to stay due to its benefits that facilitate education delivery in modern context while focusing on meeting learning objectives. Future research on hybrid and high-flex courses is needed and would benefit the field of education. Another opportunity for research lies in the prominent gap between hybrid learning and more practical academic education. In some disciplines, such as sciences, learning involves a combination of oral instruction and hands-on activities meant to develop practical knowledge and skills. Hybrid learning presents significant challenges in meeting such a requirement fully due to both time and logistical constraints. And the list continues. Thanks for reviewing my presentation. I would love to collaborate or keep in touch. Pop me an email at this address. Thank you.